Hello smart scholars. Today we are going to be looking at the steroidogenic pathway. Now what is steroidogenesis? Steroidogenesis is a biochemical process whereby steroid hormones are synthesized from a parent compound called cholesterol. Cholesterol is a lipid compound that has 27 carbon atoms. Cholesterol has several uses. It is found in all cell membranes. It is used to synthesize bile acids and is also used for the synthesis of steroid hormones. Steroid hormones are a class of hormones that are lipid soluble. They all have this ring structure. You have progesterone, testosterone, estradiol, and the hormones of the adrenal gland. Now, by way of recap, the relationship between the nervous system and the endocrine system is where it's between the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, which is also known as the master gland. Now, the hypothalamus sends releasing factors to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is situated below the hypothalamus and it signals or controls the activity of other endocrine glands, okay? That is why the pituitary gland is called the master gland. Now, the anterior lobe and the posterior lobe, all right, secrete different hormones. The posterior lobe secretes just two hormones, oxytocin and vaso pressing where we'll be concentrating on the hormones of the anterior pituitary gland and or the reproductive hormones now these hormones all right that are secreted from the pituitary gland which affect the ovaries the testes the adrenal gland and the placenta okay can also be called all right steroid hormones and then for these ones they can be called the reproductive hormones because they are synthesized in the gonads. The ovary plays a major role in reproduction as well as the testes. Now, the hormones that are secreted, all right, if are progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, okay, and in the placenta you have progesterone and estrogen. Now, back to the pathway. Cholesterol, which is the starting material, all right, is acted upon by a specific enzyme. These enzymes, all right, are called cytochrome P450 enzymes. They are specialized enzymes that are located in the mitochondria and also located in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now, by way of recap, enzymes are biocatalysts that catalyze biochemical reaction. What they do is that they speed up the rate of biochemical reaction leading to the formation of what? Substrates. Now, these enzymes that we said are specific, all right, have, fall into six major classes. You have the oxidoreductases, you have the transferases, you have the hydrolases, you have the ligases, isomerases, and lyases. So if you're looking at classification of enzymes, this biocatalyst, by way of their mechanism of action, they fall into the six classes. I'll take it again. Oxidoreductases, transferases, hydrolysis, ligases, isomerases, and lyases. Okay, so now let's go back to the steroidogenic pathway. We said cholesterol is the starting material and we have an enzyme that acts at the point 22. This enzyme is called the side chain cleavage enzyme. Okay, it's a cytochrome P, all right, 11A1 enzyme. Now, this enzyme is specific to that point and it cleaves off the, all right, the carbon atoms at point 22 to give us the first compound in the steroidogenic pathway called pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is not a hormone, but it's a major compound that is synthesized. In fact, this is the first compound that is synthesized. And it's, this, this reaction is called the rate limiting step. Now, pregnenolone has two fates. Can be taken to be, can, progesterone can be synthesized from it or 17 hydroxy pregnenolone. Now, from 17 hydroxy pregnenolone, you have DHEA. So I'll take it back again. Pregnenolone is the first compound that is synthesized in the steroidogenic pathway. It is not a hormone, 
but it is the first compound and it is the rate limiting step. This reaction is the rate limiting step. Now, the enzyme cleaves cholesterol at point 22, all right, and it is side chain cleavage enzyme or desmolase enzyme. So now pregnenolone has two fates, can be converted to progesterone, which is the first hormone, all right, in the steroidogenic pathway. Progesterone is the first hormone in the steroidogenic pathway, and it has 21 carbon atoms. If you look at the numbering of the cholesterol compound, you can see from here, this is point one, carbon one. These joints are carbon atoms. So you have carbon one, two, three, four, five. And so you can see we have down to carbon 27. So progesterone has a 27, is a 21 carbon atom, all right? And then you have testosterone, which is a 19 carbon atom. And then you have estradiol, which is an 18 carbon atom. All right, so now back to the steroidogenic pathway. We said pregnenolone has two fates, can be converted to progesterone, which is the first hormone, or 17-hydroxy, all right, pregnenolone. Now, 17-hydroxy pregnenolone, all right, is converted to DHEA. And then you have the conversion of DHEA, okay, to androstenedione. Now, Notice, androstenedione dione is, it, is an androgen, and it is an aromatizable androgen. What is an aromatizable androgen? An aromatizable androgen is an androgen that can be converted to estrogen. Now, by way of recap, females also produce estrogen. Estrogen is produced in the ovaries, all right, in the thicker cells of the ovary. Now, the ovary has the thicker cell and the granulosa cell. We'll be looking at this in detail when we're looking at the ovarian cycle. But have this at the back of your mind that you have the thicker cells of the ovary, you have the granulosa cells of the ovary. So the thicker cells produce testosterone and then it moves to the granulosa cell where it is converted to what? Estrogen. Now, back to the pathway. Now, before we go on, the testis, which is predominantly in the male, all right, produces testosterone. And testosterone is produced in the Leydig cells, all right. I'll, pr I'll put it up here, all right, L-E-Y-D-I-G, the Leydig cells of the testis. Now, androstenedione, dione, all right, this is what it looks like because of this structure, all right, so you have androstenedione dione all right androstenedione dione is converted to testosterone by this enzyme now testosterone is converted to estrogen or estradiol to by the enzyme aromatase let me write it out clearly aromatase aromatase acts on the a ring all right, so now aromatizable androgens are the androgens that can be converted to estrogens by the action of this enzyme on the A ring. Now you notice that, okay, the double bonds are introduced here and you have the cyclic ring and then you have the, all right, one of the carbon atoms taken off and so that's why you have estradiol, the addition of the hydrogen group all right, and the hydrogen group here gives you this compound, estradiol. So that's why the estradiol is one carbon atom less, all right, compared to the testosterone. Now, estradiol plays a major role in the development of the female secondary characteristics and also plays a major role in males. But estradiol is found in very minute quantities in male. It is, all right, predominantly a female hormone responsible, all right, for the development of secondary, of female secondary, all right, characteristics, enlargement of the hips, all right. And then if you go into the menstrual cycle, you find out that the estradiol plays a major role 
in the menstrual cycle, which is what we are going to be looking at subsequently. But for now, understand this. The starting compound is cholesterol, and then you have steroid hormones that are synthesized from the parent compound, cholesterol. And you have specific enzymes, which are called cytochrome P450, resident in the mitochondria and also in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And then we have seen the classes of enzyme. We've seen the connection between the nervous system and the endocrine system, major glands that all right, synthesize steroid hormones because they contain specific enzymes. And then the major hormones, as we can see. So that's all for now. We'll be looking at the menstrual cycle shortly. Don't forget to drop your comments in the comment section and bye for now.